Hello, my love. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I hope that you're having a beautiful and an amazing day. This is a timeless collective reading where hopefully I can guide you within so that you do not go without, all right? This reading will just be whatever comes out. Now, the Six of Cups came out. Today is actually April 2nd, 2024. Um, Mercury Retrograde officially started yesterday. Six of Cups came out, so we'll see what that's about. <laughs> but that really wasn't the direction that I was headed in. I have a particular spread, but anyway... You guys, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Interacting with me on the channel allows me to pick up your energy so that, of course, I can channel the most accurate readings for those of you who are tuning in. Okay, the magician card is here. Let me get into this. Six of Cups and the Magician. I don't know if you're trying to manifest something that um, perhaps like an idea from something from your, your past, a childhood dream. Or if you have someone from your past that's trying to manifest you. But there's something here. There's an element of the past that is heavy. It's strong. It's coming up. Ten of Wands, and it's a burden. Four of Swords. You're taking a rest from this. You're taking a break from this. So let's say here, this was in the recent past. Ten of Wands, Four of Swords. You decided to take a rest, to take a break from something here. What's happening in the future is the King of Cups and the Two of Swords. Someone is being led completely by spirit, by faith in the situation after feeling stuck, stagnant, or at some type of crossroads here, unable to figure out what to do with their um, with their emotions. In your mind right now, what you're focused on is not a pinnacle but a page of swords. You're researching, you're developing, you're looking for ideas on <laughs> you're looking for ideas on how to make more money. How to be more um, self-sufficient, abundant. You are focused right now on improving your overall life. What's happening in your environment? Queen of Swords and the Knight of Cups. So when I say the mind, I'm going to say this is sort of like what's in your mind, your headspace. Could even be like your, your subconscious here. What's happening around you in your environment? The Queen of Swords and the Knight of Cups. This could be your energy or like I said, the energy of, of something around you. Okay. But with the Queen of Swords here and the Knight of Cups. And the star here. You're not showing any weakness at all. When it comes to you <laughs> making an offer or accepting an offer. You've made a decision that something for you is it's wish fulfillment. It's destined. It's a part of your purpose. It could be a, a, an offer coming in and this Knight of Cups. In the future position turns into the king of cups. So you're making the decision now to go towards something that brings about growth. Expansion. Two of swords and you're trusting in divine timing. You're walking by faith and not only by sight. But there was something or there is something here that comes up. That makes you feel... Like you need to assess and evaluate this situation. So some of you like right now, you're thinking about moving forward. The Page of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles, there's someone that has their eye on you as well. Someone is studying you. They're watching you. Um, this could be a secret admirer. Like someone can see that you are very much stable and secure and abundant and perhaps single. 
For some of you, this is a person that you're dealing with. King of Wands here at the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with the Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Doesn't, yeah. For some of you, you, you're in a connection. King of Wands. This person has their eye on a partnership. They they've been studying you. They stud they're they're watching how you live your life as, as someone who is single and abundant. Independent. It's like You're looking for ways to bring more abundance into your life. You could be preparing for a more serious relationship. Someone can see this. King of Wands and the Two of Cups, though. And I feel like in the recent past, the Ten of Wands could be this, this King of Wands person. This person decided to start dropping some type of burdens here in the Four of Swords. And they're going into a period of rest of healing so it's like you could have met someone or you're about to meet someone they're on the tail end of of healing dropping some type of burden the ten of wands something that has had them overwhelmed this is definitely the masculine that's healing from some type of setback Now, this Six of Cups and the Magician card here is the Six of Cups can be a friendship. It could be a reconciliation. It could be a soulmate. It could be a, bad, a blast from the past, but it also could just be a, a contract that was written in the past, maybe even a past life. It's manifesting now. I feel like you're you're communicating very openly and clearly about your des your your desires. You have boundaries, you have standards, Queen of Swords. You're very discerning. You're not leading with emotions though. This is making a head over heart. It, it it's not a head over heart decision I'm hearing though, because your whatever this is, your head and your heart are aligned. I'm hearing this is new for you. But there is somebody else out here in this energy because you are going towards this king, this knight of cups, king of cups. The person from your past is possibly this king of wands who sees you going towards the two of cups with this king of cups. Absolutely. And they are disappointed and in regret. Two of pentacles. Three of Wands, Page of Cups, Death, Five of Wands, of course. This person is choosing now to let go of a burden, to try to rest, to retreat, and to heal. In this period of solitude, resting, retreating, um, this awakening that a past person is going through, they are reflecting on how they juggled you. And how what they did is they manifested an ending. They manifested an ending with you most likely when they chose to go into a connection with someone else and move that situation from peaceful um, I'm sorry, out, out of from, from chaos into peaceful, calmer waters. They could be regretting their decision. Who cares? Three of Cups. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so you have somebody here. It's Mercury Retrograde. Somebody is reflecting on how when they decided to move forward with someone else or go back to someone else instead of them pursuing a relationship with you. They're regretting it now because you're showing no sign of weakness when it comes to you moving forward to something that is destined for you. You're not looking back. Good for you. Seven of Swords. Yeah. 
you're no longer allowing yourself to be burdened by, I can't make it up, seven of swords, eight of cups. This person is burdened by the fact though, that, that they were sneaky and they were deceptive and they told lies. They're looking back now on the fact that they, they walked away from you. That's what they're looking at. That's the truth. Ace of Swords. And when they did this, it was a clear line in the sand drawn. I feel like you made a decision, Queen of Swords, that you're, you're, you're making them stand on their decision. Yeah. You're moving towards a new partnership. Someone that you can collaborate with. So yeah, you, you, you're making this person stand on their decision. That's what happened. Ten of Pentacles. There is now a new offer and opportunity being presented to you. And it's leading to long term. 11, 11 on the clock. You manifested now your own wish fulfillment. Your own legacy. You're inheriting. That's what I'm saying. The Six of Cups here with the Magician. You now are inheriting something that is actually aligned with your divine purpose. And you you now, it's your divine right to block out anything that's not aligned. You're blocking out a particular person or energy that's just not aligned with you long term anymore. That person is feeling remorse. No, I said that wrong. They're feeling remorse. I don't think they're feeling remorse. I feel like they want you to feel remorse for them because they're in regret. But that's not the case. You're very clear. About where you're going. The star. The star. That's you and your purpose. Your north node. The truth has been revealed. You, Everything has been illuminated. You. This page of swords with the nine of pentacles here. The reason why that's there. Is some of you. In, in, in the subconscious mind. You can feel that you're being watched. But yeah. You can feel that someone is. is um, watching you. They're studying you. When someone is in solitude, they're thinking about you. Justice, but the decision has been made for you to go towards the Ten of Pentacles. The decision has been made. Death. Eight of Pentacles, the Seven of Wands, and the Ten of Cups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not only are you working hard, but see, you have the nine of pentacles and your energy. You see this masculine here is the eight of pentacles. You have a masculine now who is working very hard also to guard, safeguard, and protect this ten of cups, ten of pentacles. So this is what's happening for a lot of you currently. An illusion has been completely shattered. The moon in the world and the high priestess. The hangman in the reverse. You're not hanging in limbo at all. You see something for exactly what it is. And what you see is that this new offer is wish fulfillment. However, this king of wands wants to hold on to you in hopes that you will not go towards his two of cups. That's leading to the four of wands. There's a relationship that leads to marriage. Someone is still holding on to you energetically. And they're trying to manifest you. But I mean, hello. The two of cups followed by the four of wands. This is wish fulfillment. It's celebration. It's marriage. It's commitment. It's building a house. It's building a home to have and to share, to love, for better, for worse. It's, it's here. Two of cups. These two people are coming together and here's the union, the celebration. Somebody is watching you and they see the nine of pentacles can be someone who is single 
But the nine of pentacles goes into the ten of pentacles. The only thing that someone here is missing is their life partner. Someone is watching you or you feel watched. You feel like you're being watched because you, you, you're being watched. Someone they know, they can feel. Oh, wow, you're at the nine of pentacles. The next thing up is the ten of pentacles. The ten of pentacles absolutely comes with another person. And this other person is the eight of pentacles. The person is going to put in all this work to ensure that your finances are good. Your family life is, is good. Their heart will be for you. Your heart will be for them. This person will protect their heart. They will guard their heart from things that are on the outside, unlike this person from your past. This is your car this is your karmic justice. This ending brings you justice. And it welcomes this this new connection. Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Justice. That's marriage. Hundred percent marriage. Hundred percent. The star, Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, Justice, Two of Cups, the Four of Wands. There's no denying it. You're either with the person that you will marry or you're about to soon meet that person. Somebody sees you as worthy of them building a family with you. One person's trash is another person's treasure. One person's I'm unsure is another person's I knew th the very moment. Yeah, this King of Wands here, <laughs> they're, they, they're, they're having a very difficult time with hope. With letting you, and that's the reason why this Two of Swords is here. With this King of Cups, you need to be very mindful of this person being in your energy, altering how you think or how you feel about something very, very beautiful in front of you. Yeah, because you're being, their projections is causing somewhat of a an illusion or some kind of mental confusion for you. Because again, the, what this person is hoping is that you will have remorse for them. Because they're regretful of their decision. This is someone who was dealing with you. They turned their back. They, they sacrificed or surrendered your connection. They went back to something from their past. And when they went back to that thing from the past, what they found out is the, the truth is that they should have left that situation where it was. But everything happens for a reason. Apparently, God did not see this person as fit for you. Therefore, he allowed them to go back to wherever they went back to. Well, this person could not release themselves from a certain way of thinking with the swords and the, a certain way of thinking or how they felt. This person could have felt that um, a very long term committed relationship with you. It was too much of a burden because it would have forced them to heal. They would have had to be in the upright. They would have had to communicate with you with, with truth. In honesty and have integrity because you're in the energy of the high priestess, meaning you can see all things that are hidden with the moon here. Three of Pentacles. Yeah, you'll be um, collaborating, teaming up, and working with this King of Cups. Judgment. That's the final say of the most high. This is what it is. This is already the will of fortune. It's destined. It's a positive shift or change. The chariot for movement. The chariots is the spiritual meaning of, of chariot sometimes is, is marriage. Seven of Cups. It's the offer that you always dreamed of, that you imagined. No games, no illusions. The Seven of Cups, this new offer, this opportunity, it brings you options. 
it brings you options. It brings you opportunities. There is no, if you notice here, present in the present and in the future, there is nothing here that is an obstacle. There's nothing here other than an ending that brings justice. But there is there is no no obstacles, no confusion. Even the two of swords here. The, the two of swords to me is always stalemate energy. It's being at a crossroads. It's indecisive. But that is when you learn to surrender and you will lead. Allow like God to lead you and you'll walk by faith and not by sight. Because the thing that is trying to confuse you, you can't. It, it's not in front of you. It's the the projections and the energy of something from your past. It's, it's, it's challenging your strength and ability to leave something completely behind. The star. I'm sorry, the sun. The sun, the car means yes. This is a yes. Whatever you're going towards is a yes. And it's your emperor. Dang. My goodness. This person from the past is sick. They can't believe they missed this opportunity. It really feels like someone here is learning a lot about your strength, your worth, and your value. Because of all of this fruitful abundance that you're going into. It's making someone really, really see your true worth and value. Queen of Cups. Here's the match here. You have the King of Cups in the future position with the Queen of Cups. The Emperor is choosing the Queen of Cups. They're the King of Cups. Nine of Wands. <laughs> yeah. Nine of Wands. Four of Pentacles with the Nine of Wands. This is a lot of you a past person. They're wanting to communicate with you. Or this is their energy that is coming towards you. So you need to make sure that you're blocking their energy. This person definitely is receiving downloads about the offer that you have that's bringing you wish fulfillment. You could be dealing with a person from your past could have um, some type of spiritual gift or ability. There was a contract here. Okay, so they're, they're tapping in somehow. But we're just in that energy too right now. And I would say that especially with um, Mercury being in retrograde currently and us being in eclipse season as well as Aries season, this is where a lot of people began to take action, okay? The divine masculine energy, whether male or female, people are taking action. They're organizing things. They're getting things structured. They're thinking about their... Their empire, they're thinking about long term things. It's spring, okay? This is you planting seeds and watching things bloom and blossom and, and preparing now for your harvest to come. Somebody can see that you're planting a seed or someone is planting a seed with you, and the harvest is, 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 is amazing, it's beautiful. Somebody now is wishing, oh wow, I wish, I wish that I, I planted a seed with that feminine. In, in that feminine. Somebody wants that prosperity. They see it. They see that you, you stand in, a, in, in fields that are always fruitful, abundant, that are always multiplied. You, you bring the harvest. Somebody is seeing that. Wherever you go, abundance follows. Two of Pentacles. This person, someone here wanted to weigh their options. Definitely third party situations. Five of Swords, Dinosaurs, Ten of Swords. Ouch. Okay. King of Swords, Five of Pentacles. This person is angry. They're bitter. They're mad. They're upset about their choice to engage in certain things. They did not include you, the five of swords. So this person made a very unwise choice. 
nine of swords, ten of swords, their mental chaos and conflict has escalated to the point that they now are exhausted. King of Swords, and it has turned them cold, mean, angry, bitter because they know that they are locked out. They're out in the cold. They have no access to your success or your abundance. Wow, look at this. Six of Wands, Ace of Cups, and the Hierophant. See? God has his hand on your love life, and he's bringing you the type of partner who's going to lead you out of the Five of Wands, out of conflict, out of chaos. There is no competition. The Six of Wands is the same person here that has made a decision to fight for happiness and joy with you. The Fool. All you have to do is say yes, take a leap of faith. That's beautiful. I mean, this was so to the point, like, you know, <laughs> what else is there to say? I'm not going to drag this out. I'm going to leave it here. Um, I just want to pull maybe a few oracles of guidance, but this is the situation here. Your, um, I'm going to pull it from this deck. Someone is seeing the true beauty, the essence of who you are by your ability to manifest abundance wherever you go and with whoever you're with. They cannot deny the calling that is upon your life. And someone here, like I said, they, they can't help but to be very um, regretful. And in some cases, even envious of whatever new offers or opportunities you have coming in. I don't know if this person, for some of you, if it's a past person, I don't know if they are currently with someone now. They could have left someone. This person could have even left someone in hopes that they would come towards you. You're not available. You're not available for this person. God has already placed you in a new contract. Wow, look at that loyal heart. Wow. At the bottom of this deck, look. You have here surrendering. Karmic. False twin flame. Twin flames. I have not pulled this deck. And I know a year. I cannot believe these are the cards at the bottom. And I'm going to, I'm reading the message exactly as a card. You're surrendering your karmic false twin flame. Because you've met your twin flame or you're about to. And they have a look, loyal heart and in between worlds. Why? You have your happy, happy, yes, and here and now. Whoever is in your life here and now, they're here to co-create with you and go the distance. You can't, you whatever this new connection is for most of you, and, and now, of course, for some of you, it could be a past person that's coming back or someone from your past that you're meant to be in union with. You take it however it resonates. But this is a new energy for sure. You and this person, though, I feel that like I'm talking to a group. 
some of you, it's the false twin flame that's in your energy. This, this situation leaves you feeling very drained and incompatible with this person. You just know something is not right. There's always some type of interference. There's always a separation. There's always some kind of discord or disharmony. This person was karmic to you. They were in your life to teach you and help you how to grow. Teach you how to grow um, so that you could heal and actually find your true twin flame. I feel like whoever your true twin flame is, the two of you are coming together and you're releasing a lot of control. And you're accepting that you can't run from this situation. The two of swords is here. You and this, this new person even could be feeling at times like, you know, what is this? Or it could feel like the energy is a little bit stuck or stagnant at times. For some of you, that's because there's still some lingering energy from a counterfeit situation. But you and your true twin are about to surrender completely to your connection. And the way you do that is you learn to actually be compassionate with yourself about the situation from your past, most likely with a false twin flame or karmic. You really need to embrace all of the lessons that that person taught you in your healing journey. Yeah, you could be in a friendship with your actual twin and you have the mirroring card here. So your twin flame is going to re reflect back to you your truth. So if some of you right now are feeling torn, even in your own subconscious mind, because you may still be in between worlds, kind of shifting out of, you know, your, your South Node, that karmic energy fully into being aligned with your, your higher purpose, your calling in your North Node. There will be disconnects in your actual union if you are still carrying the weight and the heavy burden of any type of guilt, shame, rejection, abandonment, resentment, or whatever from a past connection. So you're being urged at this time to get yourself completely out of the dark and go towards this person that has a loyal heart. The why card is here. Why? Because they are a part of your actual purpose. They're here to make you happy. They're here to go the distance. They're here to co-create with you. They're here and now. There's no need for you to look back on the past at all. This new connection, it's a union that will be grounded in friendship. This is to teach you how to be more carefree, more playful, more flirty, more fun. Those are the relationships that go the distance. Unlike the situation before where it could have been very, very passionate, but it was passionate, but it, it, was, um, it wasn't enduring because you always knew something wasn't right. I feel like you're going towards the energy of a person now that you can, you can trust, you can feel safe with being vulnerable. You're manifesting something that should be easy breezy and it's coming at the right time, but you need to make yourself available for it. Your true twin is awakening to this connection. And your hard work is being rewarded. That's why the page of swords is here with the nine of pentacles. Somebody is saying that like, wow, you, you really are a person of, of great value. You need to be mindful of your thoughts, though, with the manifesting card here. The law of attraction That's what I'm saying. Try not to allow your mind to focus. And if you are dealing with anything in your subconscious mind, like I said, a, a fear of abandonment, a fear of rejection, neglect, you need to trace that back to your previous relationships and maybe even your own parents. There is some type of wounding here in your subconscious mind that is connecting to your conscious mind that could lead to you manifesting Um A life or a situation that you don't actually want. You're trying to make yourself 
available for the type of connection that should be easy. It should be effortless where you and someone can work together and they're, they're supportive. They are supportive of your emotional needs. Let me tell you, for those of you who are dealing with, you know, these counterfeit energies, the reason why you never feel safe in those situations, especially when you're constantly going back and forth with these separations and the, the third party interference is if you have a wound such as abandonment or, or rejection or anything like that, even from childhood, for someone to constantly leave you and come back, it's re-triggering and traumatizing something that's in your subconscious mind that you're needing to heal from. A person who does that to you continuously is not someone who offers you emotional support or safety. And once you realize that and you start to see yourself as valuable as and, and as beautiful as, as first and foremost as God sees you because he made you beautiful, perfect, you're, you're wonderfully made. But he's sending someone to you or has sent someone to you who sees you in your full glory. They're not going to leave you. They're not going to forsake you. You know, they don't have to be glorified. You don't have to stroke their ego. They're just a good person. And they're matching your energy. You've manifested this type of person. But in order for that to be a smooth sailing relationship, you're going to have to completely free yourself from the, the blockages and the fears of a situation that really hurts you. With this counterfeit, who provided you with no emotional security or stability. Yeah. Make sure that your connection, your new connections are not being blocked by a third party or someone on the outside. You need to shift your focus to yourself and completely release something that you know did not allow you to have, like, you know, I guess the, the love that you needed. Yeah, temptation. See, that's what I'm saying. Something here that you felt bound to, it, it constantly makes you feel sad. This is also, too, a lot of projection from a person in your life who carries a lot of guilt, shame, regret, and sadness about the loss of you. This person, until you completely heal from that situation, you're going to keep picking up on their, their energy. Because let me say this. Because I know a lot of you guys, maybe, you know, you're cutting, you're cleansing, you're clearing. Understand the power of thoughts, okay? Doing a cord cutting ritual or anything else, the moment that you open yourself up energetically to that person, your banishment work is now null and void. You don't even have to be um, intimate with the person to create a soul tie. If you think about a person or a situation enough, and I feel like for some of you, you have dealt with someone who understands the power of their mind and their thoughts. This person purposely manifests you to reattach cords to you on purpose. And then you have here the sexuality card here. This person could be very, very drawn to you. Like I said, it's a very... um. It's a, it's, a, it's a connection that's based on lust and how to fulfill the desires of their ego and their flesh. And you have your inner child and letting go. Your inner child is, is begging you now to let go of this situation. Do not sell out. Do not settle for, oh, I think, you know, the... The intimacy, the chemistry, or whatever in this situation could have had you under the illusion or the impression that this was love. And it's not because you had no emotional safety or security and your inner child was looking for safety and security. 
and you stumbled across this person or they were sent to you by the universe as a test to teach you how to love yourself and how to pursue real safety and security by embracing self-love and people who allow you to be vulnerable. So again, you could have experienced neglect, abandonment, rejection, or something, even as a child, with your parents. It conditioned you to looking for love. You go out in the world and you find a lot of people, energy vampires, they're latching on to you because you're desiring love. They bring you the passion and they love bomb you, creating cycles of illusions that entrap you. So this also leads to you carrying guilt and shame because you're like, well, why did I let that person in my life? It's not your fault. Not not a hundred percent. You at some point were were left or rejected or abandoned. You were searching for love, which is human nature to do. You discovered lust before love. But love is coming in now. But you have to surrender these lustful connections that are karmic, that are blocking true love. And these connections that are coming to you now, they require patience because they're going to be rooted, like grounded in friendship. It's like God is going to put you in situations now where you truly learn to... Um, you learn to learn people <laughs> and you have to give them an opportunity to learn you so that when they make a commitment to you, you know that they're committed to you, to you fully with no mask on. So let's see what do you need to release. Surrender to prayer and surrender to rest and sleep. So you need to slow down. You need to allow your, your mind, your body, your spirit, it needs to rest. And you need to give yourself over to the most high. You need to pray. You need to meditate. You need to cleanse and clear the things that are keeping your mind in bondage. Surrender your need to always be right. Surrender obsessive thinking. Yeah. Yeah. This, this obsessive thinking about this past situation, you're needing to let it go because obsessively thinking about it is what's allowing the soul tie to continuously reattach itself to you, allowing the flow of this person's energy to continue to reach you. Obsessing over this situation is not going to bring you any type of clarity or help you to solve the problem at hand. I feel like some of you have dealt with the type of person who they come in, they love on you, and then they gaslight you and try very hard to make you think that um, you're wrong and they're right. Surrender your need to be right. You have to get to a point where you say, you know what, even if I am wrong, that's okay. I'm choosing to surrender and sacrifice this situation. You know, learn to tell a person, that's fine, blame it on me. Blame it on me. But I'm going to spiritually block you in the process. Thank you. Exactly. Surrender to setting limits. Set the boundaries. And surrender fear. Some of you are afraid to set boundaries because you are addicted. If you've been in a narcissist, empath type of situation, you, you're addicted to that person coming back. You're addicted to the idea of you possibly um, controlling them. A lot of people who, you know, have been hurt 
and you fall in love with, with the energy vampire, it, it becomes addicting. Like, you're always trying to figure out how can you get that person to see that you're right? How can you get that person to do what you need them to do, what you want them to do? And what you have to do is get to the root of the situation and understand that you need to release your fear of losing that person completely. Which means you also have to release your fear of losing yourself completely in an effort for you to actually find your new self. There's an old version of yourself that you need to release completely. Because some of you now, you're in new situations, but your thoughts are still aligned with an outdated version of yourself. And that's why things are not lining up as they should. Let's see the overall message for some of you. You have a destined partnership here, but you will have to take a leap of faith and understand that it's safe for you to go into something new. They, they're not going to hurt you. You're not going to hurt them. You know, stop with the obsessive thoughts. You're thinking the worst. No need to do that. Trust that you've already come out of your karma cycle. Embrace your new timeline. Embrace it fully. Wow. There you have it. True love. This love is emotional, physical, and unconditional. You have her retreat and interference. See what I'm saying? You need to set limits and boundaries to allow yourself to recharge and stop this third party energy from intruding on your new relationship it's the thought of this person this past situation you some of you the, the truth is you haven't healed you're dealing with two different situations here one that is most is strictly sexual is passionate but not enduring and then another very stable connection here you're being advised right now, do not ignore the red flags. There needs to be boundaries here. Some of you right now, of course, Mercury retrograde, but even if it's not, you're in denial about a situation because of chemistry and passion. But this situation is full of chemistry and passion. It always leads to you feeling regretful. After you entertain the situation, some of you now, you need to be careful because if you entertain this situation, you forfeit a true divine partnership. Somebody is in regret, longing for you, but da, 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 wait a minute. You have here and now. You have someone here now or coming in with a relationship that can truly stand the test of time. They're not in and out, back and forth. So I feel like that message was pretty clear. Um, you know, you just, you're just going to have to do your um your healing and shadow work release yourself from the past make it you know make a vow to yourself to no longer be stuck and trapped and understand that when you deal with low self-esteem you start to try to control people in situations because you have a fear of starting over You have to know you deserve success, love, abundance, and all things that are great. You are either trying to control someone or you're dealing with a person that has a very strong desire to control you. And you, you're going to have to surrender, you know, denial that you have a very stressful situation That's in your energy. No need for you to keep wondering, did you make the right decision to leave something behind? It's scary because this situation, it has been attached to you for so long. Because it, the, the connection with this, for some of you, this romantic relationship, it's, it runs deeper. It, it, it constantly, um, it's targeting like a, a deeper wound that you have.
you have to surrender, um, make the sacrifice to leave your counterfeit person behind completely. That means you 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 can't even allow yourself to think about that person anymore. And if you don't really deal with the pain, you will keep thinking about them obsessively. So you you're gonna have to go to the root of this problem. Yeah. But you're on your way out and you're headed towards a loyal heart. They're a part of your purpose. They're to, here to make you happy. And you're supposed to co-create with them. Yeah. It says cheating hard. If you were cheated on, it is likely negative emotions are running high. You must honestly ask yourself if it's worth saving or to just walk away. Some of you are dealing with a person. We're all grown here. This person, they're in a loveless relationship. They're full of regret. They're stuck in limbo. Okay. They come into your life and they deal with you. When they are having issues with someone that they are, you know, bound to by children or finances. I feel like you try to remember the good, the good times with this person. They come in with lies, love bombing you, lying to you, whatever. And when you deal with this person, you find yourself stuck in limbo. You have to be careful not to do that because you don't need to keep entering what, what feels like a dark night of the soul because of you dealing with this person. Someone is dealing with you out of convenience and they most likely, they probably live at a distance. They've ran from the, the connection many times. Look, I want to awaken fears. Your worst fears are being awakened, such as rejection, abandonment, loss, or commitment issues and bringing out all the skeletons in, that are hiding in your closet. Find somebody that you're compatible with. A person that is already stuck and bound in another situation that lacks integrity, you're not compatible with them. There should be nothing that this person can say or do that leads you to thinking that, you know, something is going to change. It says highs and lows. Karmic love is often passionate and fiery one minute, cold and distant the next usually representing unhealed aspects you are both working through. What's usually high and low? People who are with addictions. Codependency is an addiction. You have somebody that every time they're dealing with a low point in life, they're addicted to coming back to you. And when you're dealing with a low point, you get that high off of them returning. You need to leave that person on. And let me say this, for some of you, I'm picking up romantic, but this could be a friend or a family member. Whoever is, is is someone in your life that comes in and out. And it could it could even start with like a, a family member, a parent, a sibling. One minute you're you're getting along, the next minute it's no content. It, and, and you're having problems. You know that that person carries narcissistic traits. You need to stop allowing them to come back in. You get excited when they're around, and then you're depressed and in the dark night when they're not around. And it's, it keeps you in limbo because it's a cycle that it'll never stop until you stop. Yeah, I got that message strongly. For some of you, this is a, even a family member. They keep, and you can have a family member or a past lover who deals with addictions. I'm getting that right now. You let this person in because you feel bad for them. And when they see you doing well, they want to come in and have a piece of your comfort. But this person, they bring uh, the energy of death and destruction because they have a disease. Some of you are dealing with someone who actually has a disease, a disease of, of some sort of addiction. Narcissism is, is also a mental disease. They cannot stop. Looking back on the past, they can't stop being deceptive. They can't stop coming up with different strategies to betray you. 
Stop letting this person in and around you. Stop thinking about them. Stop obsessing about them. Because when you think about them, you give them access to think about you. Yeah, two of pentacles. Somebody here, definitely, they're imbalanced. Chemical imbalance. This person is up and down. It's a very karmic situation. Whether it's a friend, family member, or lover, this person has nothing about them is stable. Nothing. And they see you when you're happy, victorious, successful, receiving rewards and recognition. And here they come in to break your heart yet again. You should know this cycle and pattern all too well now. And for some of you, you have something now that you need to protect. Whether it's a business, a business partner, a romantic relationship, children, your family, your assets. You need to be more serious now about protecting your peace, your prosperity, and your abundance from karmic energies, whether they're in your friend group or your family or ex-lovers. This is you being attacked by the spirit of narcissism. And the way you stop it is you're going to have to get to the root of your codependency. And codependency shows up as like it's rejection, abandonment, anxiousness, whatever. And let go of guilt. That's my last message. If you're dealing with a person who has mental health issues, addictions, you, it, you don't need to feel guilty for choosing to protect yourself. You should not put yourself in the crossfire of this person and their energy. Because you will end up in the sunken place and they will continue to be on their highs and the seesaw of life. You got to let it go. Okay. I love you guys. I really hope that this gave you a bit of clarity of confirmation about a situation that you may be dealing with. I really hope that you guys understand what I'm saying for sure, though, about the soul's high. A lot of people think that they have to be intimate with someone to create a soul tie. Soulmates can be friends and family. You do not have to sleep with a person to form a soul tie. Okay? Go back and heal the inner child. Something has, has been spoken over you or embedded in you perhaps since childhood. Since the age of six or maybe even before, your root chakra is, is suffering because you're finding it, you're looking for security and stability that should have been granted to you with your family and within your tribe. Don't go out in the world and allow people to play on the fact that you're, you're lacking security and stability from your past. You've created security and stability for yourself now. You deserve people in your life. Who are going to protect your security and stability. Okay. I love you guys. I always go with and so that you never go without. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.